Badger is watching today, we would love to hear from you. Um, this person I'm going to bring on has been doing photography for, oh, well, I'll let her talk about that a little bit more, but she does photography. She's got two kids of her own. Uh, she is, she wears so many hats. Um, and she's going to be on as a guest again next Friday to talk about a whole nother thing. But today we're focusing on photography. If you know anyone that has kids, or if you have kids, or if you are going through your maternity, uh, journey, and you're like, how am I going to get these perfect photos? Well, we're going to give you some tips, but I will kind of give you a little spoiler alert. Hire a professional. But Lauren's here to give you some some tips. I'm going to bring her on and introduce her uh, or have her uh, talk a little bit more about herself. Um, if you, it's your very first time watching, guys, please say hello. Say new in the comments. I would love, love, love to see you uh, watching and if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel and definitely like this video. Uh, all those likes and um, subscriptions really mean a lot to me. So thanks so much. And here we go. Let's bring up Lauren. Lauren. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. We have had, we you were one of the first people that um, I was really excited to start planning on having you as my guest. Uh, and I know you were super excited about it too. So excited. Oh, thank you so much for being so supportive in everything. And I am so excited to give some support back because everything that you're doing has a lot to do with what I'm doing. Um, so yeah. yeah, today we're focusing on photography, but talk just a little bit about all the other hats that you wear. Cause I don't think I did it okay. justice. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you got the soccer hat, which I'm really excited to get back to. Um, the mom hat, I'm a, um, a mom of two boys. They are eight and five. And um, I'm also a social worker and I work for um, Simmons University doing, I'm an advisor and I also teach in their MSW program. And I have a private practice. It's not my private practice. I work for a private practice and I have a couple clients there. And I do the photography thing. Oh my God. It's so much. How do you find the time? I don't know. It is so impressive. Uh, we got some fans <laughs> watching. We've got Kelly out there. She says, hello. Hi Kelly. And of course my mom, who's always been, Hi. Yep. she's always been there. Like my parents have always, always wanted to know the soccer team. They're just, they're like, they're part of the team basically. They're so fabulous. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and then I did invite a lot of the honey badgers to uh, come watch today. So if they happen to pop in, we'll definitely uh, put them up on screen too. Um, and if you guys do the re oops, if you do the rewatch, uh, do you know leave a comment afterwards too. So if you can't catch us live, we'd still love to hear from you and know that you you caught us later on. All right, let's dive in, guys. Oh, let me back up. I always do a little update, Lauren. Sorry on uh, my fertility <laughs> journey. So. Right now we're in the two week wait. Um, we are almost done with week one. Um, this is after our IUI procedure that we had, um, not last, yeah, last Saturday. Uh, so we will find out next Saturday. Now guys, I am doing something different this time. I don't think I told you this yet. Uh, so you're not really supposed to do pregnancy tests um, until you know the actual blood test because you can get a false positive um, or a false negative. You could get false information and then it just really messes with your emotions. But I've seen other people that do this where they actually, um, test that hormone level out. Um, cause it can test positive falsely if, um, from the trigger shot that you take before the IUI procedure. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm testing it out until I can't see the line on the pee stick anymore. And then what I'm going to do is um, keep testing every day until hopefully I can start seeing it, uh, seeing it come back again. Though, as I told you a couple days ago, I am not as hopeful this time around as I was last time. And final update is that, you know, if this doesn't work, we will be moving into the IVF part. Um, and then depending on if my guest who's lined up for Monday, uh, joins us or not. I might be doing a deeper dive um, into a more emotional topic about the journey. So catch us on Monday. Either it's going to be an emotional <laughs> journey with some, uh, with my guest or it's going to be my own emotional journey. So we're getting that those details nailed down. But let's focus on our guest for today. And Lauren, photography. Yes. Okay. Yes. So we are we are going to give people tips, but not until the end because we want to want them to hang around here. Um, right. So let's let's kind of uh, establish why you're such an expert at this. Okay. So mm -hmm. when did you fall in love with photography? 
And when did you start to do maternity, birth, and newborn photos? And breastfeeding photos, okay. too. Talk on, talk a little bit about this. I'll be quiet. Okay. You go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have been taking pictures since I was a kid. Like, I was obsessed with cameras. I loved the thing of, like, getting your film developed and then seeing what you caught on film. And you can ask my parents. I was taking pictures all the time. I was taking pictures of my friends. Like, I was one of those people in college before the digital cameras came out, like, that was taking photos at the bars and everything like it was just it was one of my favorite things to do um and then I got my first kind of semi-nice uh camera and I was babysitting a lot of people in Boston because it's, it's expensive to live in Boston so I was babysitting a lot and I started taking pictures of their kids and then they started asking me to take pictures of the, like the first birthday parties and families and stuff like that and paying me for it and I was like oh I can get paid to do this. Sure. Like, let's, <laughs> let's do this. Yes. <laughs> um, and then I moved to Illinois. And when I did that, I was like, fine, like, we're going to really do this. Like I want to do photography um, professionally. So I upgraded my gear. I did a, um, oh gosh, the Indiegogo. I did an Indiegogo campaign and like got myself some good equipment and started building up a clientele and, um, at first it was a lot of family work. It was a lot of like birthday parties, like all the little event type things. And I was like, you know, this isn't what I got into it for. I really want to do like artsy, my stuff kind of thing. And very candid. I like to do uh, mostly unposed stuff. And then honestly, the whole maternity bump to birth stuff happened after I had my own kids. That's really when I was like, wow this motherhood thing and this baby thing is, is something and it's beautiful and it celebrates womanhood, which is something I've always done and wanted to do. And yes. So yeah, it really spoke to me. And then the breastfeeding, Oh my God, I loved my breastfeeding journey. I know that I'm very lucky. A lot of people are not so lucky. It's very hard um, and very personal, but I loved it. And so I wanted to start taking pictures of it. So I did a whole, thing like where I just got models and just went nuts and Brian composed a song for it and yeah oh my god it's so amazing two artists together and when you collaborate the amazing emotion and um, what you can, can capture in that is so cool uh the yeah. photos that I'm playing here are from Lauren's um bump to birth uh book that she put together that she's um you know using to kind of show people her work, you know, to, to, um, advertise that. Um, these are amazing. I like, I've seen these photos, like as I was putting together today's presentation, I've watched these probably like 50 times and I just can't <laughs> get enough of them. They are so good. Thank you. Um, awesome. So this is, you know, thanks for telling us about the background behind this too. And you know, this is so you, the, you, you didn't go to school for this. Like this is something you're self-taught. You you yeah. have developed your own artistic style purely from within, mm -hmm. which is amazing. Um, in the past year, it's been tougher to photograph in person, right? Uh, so some of that yeah. business hasn't been there for you, but you made an adjustment uh, and it's something that might actually be able to stick around. Um, talk about that a little bit. Sure. Um... Well, for one, I didn't do it all on my own, just so you know, like I did, I contacted mentors. The photography okay. community is awesome. They're always, people are always willing to like help. And I couldn't have been here without my mentor. So it wasn't like completely 100% just me. Gotcha. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, yeah, so this year has been weird, obviously. And um, a lot of stuff got put on hold, but and, it of course came right when my own, my very own sister was having her first baby. And like, all I wanted to do was take pictures of her birth, take pictures of her newborn and all that stuff. And I couldn't, I couldn't do any of it. So I was like, great, what am I going to do? Um, so I came up with this behind the glass or through the glass, um, session for newborns where I would come to someone's place and find glass, like literally like door glasses, window glasses, whatever and do the newborn shots and family shots through the glass um, so that we could be safe. Um, and so I, all my sister's photos that I got of um, Cecilia are through the glass. 
because uh, I didn't get to see her or hold her for some time mm -hmm. until after that. Yep. And then the other stuff I did is I had to cancel a bunch of newborn uh, appointments that I had. And what I offered instead was um, my expertise. So I kind of, I made a video to show a simple wrap and I gave it to my families. And then I had them contact me on the day that they really wanted to do the photos. And I would be there on FaceTime with them to try and help them through the wrap. I would help them find the best place for light. I would help them adjust the baby. And then they sent me their photos and I professionally edit them. Wow. That's so cool. And are you, you're planning on continuing that service? Um, yeah, for anyone who it? needs it, I'm, yeah, I'm here, you know, I get that everybody has their own comfort level with this pandemic and um, I am going into people's homes. Um, I have the whole double mask. We stay apart. I'm vaccinated, all that good stuff. So I am back in people's homes if they want, but if they don't like that is a service that I am more than willing to help with people because I want everybody to have newborn photos. I think they're so important. Yeah, absolutely. And it is nice. Things are starting to open up again. And, um, you know, and if, if people try to do their own newborn photos and find that it's not going to work, yeah, they've got a backup. They've got you. Uh, even if they yeah. haven't booked you in, in advance now that you can give them at least some tip uh, tips, um, you know, through that, that virtual um, experience, which yeah. is really cool. But that's not the specialty here. Lauren is amazing in person, guys. Like, I was looking, she shared like the albums with me so I could pick and choose what I wanted to, you know, show you guys today. It was honestly overwhelming because, Lauren, you probably have like hundreds, hundreds of photo sessions in there. So many. It's so crazy. many. <laughs> yeah. I know. I'm so lucky, actually. Like, it's kind of, it, it blows my mind where I was and then where I've gotten. It's, it's pretty mind blowing. Like this is my business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Kelly's like my, one of my favorite clients, of course, like she's had me photograph everything and I love it. <laughs> she has every, <laughs> every card that we get and everything is, is all Lauren's work. It's amazing. Oh my God. Um, you've done a lot of our friends. I didn't, I think you've done a shoot for me before, but I am planning uh, when it's our time uh, to have you do everything. And I'm I'm really excited too because I want to have Lauren do actually do my birth photography. Yes. Um, so let's talk about that. Maybe I don't know. Like yeah. everything, um, you know, being in in the hospital room or wherever it is that they're having birth, where they're giving birth. Talk about yeah. that experience and has it always gone smooth? Um, birth is unpredictable. I don't know if you know, but it's really unpredictable. So, um, yeah, I've done hospital births and I've done home births. Um, I actually just had a new client, um, sign me up for a home birth in, at the end of the summer. I'm so excited. Um, this is my passion. This is what I love. This is what I want to do all the time. I just give me all the births. Um, so, <laughs> you know, you get, you get called and you're like, your, your life is on hold for like three weeks. So I'm on call for three weeks for my clients. Meaning like I have backup plans for backup plans. If this person goes into labor at 3 a.m., this is what we're doing. Um, this is where the kids go. I am non-existent for that day, basically. That is part of um, the service. That's a big part that of it. That is part of the service. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Can't put any, everything needs to get rescheduled. I mean, if I'm teaching, I have to have a backup substitute ready to go. Like the whole thing. Um, so sometimes I go in there like, so this one mom, I'm going to tell you this story is this one mom, it was her, her ninth child, nine. Oh nine. my God. Yeah. So her ninth child, um, and she had to be induced. So when you get induced, it can take a long time. Cause like that baby's not naturally knocking on the door, right? Like we're trying to medically get that baby to knock on the door and come out. So it can take an extra long time. So this mama was on the Pitocin and she felt like she was contracting a lot. And so she's like, you should probably come. So I was like, all right, I will be there. Nine. Yeah. <laughs> um, she's like, yeah, we should totally, you should, you should get here. I think I'm close. And this woman's had eight other babies. So I just was like, yeah, sure. Um, I'm on my way. And I get there and then we are like stuck for five hours. Oh no. And just nothing's, nothing's happening. Nothing's going. Um, 
And whenever I'm getting great pictures of the time with her and her husband and the, the hospital staff, and like, it's still always worthwhile. But then she's starting to get panicky. And so she needs some medication to like calm down and like nothing's happening. There's like, I'm watching the contractions on the screen and I'm just like, well, I better get some Chipotle and have some food. <laughs> so I run out, I go to the bathroom, I order my Chipotle and I come back and the baby's there. Oh no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. It literally, the doctor was not in the room. The nurse was not there. The husband had to catch it. What? Because it it was that fast. Oh my! I came back. God. My heart was pounding. I was like, Oh my god! And I just started taking all the pictures. I was just like, Fine. Like it's still the umbilical cord was still attached. Like the whole thing. I was just like, Okay, I'm here now. <laughs> that is crazy. That it could it just like happen that. that fast after so that long. Fast. Oh my god. After so long. And her husband. Caught so. It. <laughs> I'm like, maybe I should wear diapers to these things. I don't know. Because now I'm like scared to go to the bathroom. <laughs> like how, how quick was it? Like how long were you gone? Like oh, you I, not, not longer than five minutes. Oh my God. Literally five yeah. minutes. I left her and I told her husband where I was going because it was so quiet and so nothing going on. Oh my God. And we're all like, okay, this is a great time to take a break and get some sustenance and go to the bathroom. Yeah. Nope. Five minutes. No. Maybe, maybe the baby was camera shy. Just like, Hey, <laughs> get that photographer out of here. Then I'll come. Could be. <laughs> I'll come <out. laughs> oh my God. That's a great story. Yep. Well, it's unpredictable. That is definitely, you can't predict anything in, in birth anymore, I guess. Well, not anymore. I ever. don't think ever, ever, ever from what ever. I've heard. Everybody's no. birth story is different. Yes. Wow. How many have you done? How many birth photography sessions? Four. Four. Okay, cool. Yep. And now you two have a fifth hospital one and two home. Yep. And I have a fifth one booked. Um, actually, I have another one coming up in May. Um, so I have May and I have August. Wow. And so it's starting. It's starting. I'm so excited. So these photos that people are capturing, this is they're they're very personal. Um, what do very a lot personal. of these people? You know, what do they do with them? They just put them into an album and you know pull it out for their own kind of like memories. Yeah, so I equate it to like a wedding day. Like these are things that there's so much going on on the, that day and that you really want to have it all captured and like have the feeling of the day captured in your album. Yeah. So a lot of people do, they'll get an album. Um, they find that people are like, oh, gross, who wants their birth done? But then people who are like hesitant to do it, like when they did it, were so glad that they did because it's such a, such a great memory. Mm -hmm. It's such a big moment that like you want to go back and look at it over and over and over again. Cause it's, it's just huge. It's a huge moment. So yeah, a lot of times they'll make, um, they'll make albums. Um, you get those first moments ever capture where like you, the first skin to skin, the first time dad cuts the cord or a partner cuts the cord or whoever cuts the cord. Um, you get the, all the, the stuff that's on the baby when they come out, you get to like see that. And like the first time there's breastfeeding, if that's what's going on, you get that moment captured, like all the firsts yeah. are captured in one spot. And you stick around for a bit after the baby is born. I do. Yeah. yeah. That's so lovely. And, and leading mm -hmm. up to it, you're capturing those moments where they're, they're like, they're going through the contractions. I, that, that's, those are some of my f favorites of the ones you shared with me. It's, um, you know, just, you can, you can feel through the photograph, you know, what they're going through and, and this kind of like, come on, baby, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I, me being there, I'm always like, I'm holding my breath with every push. I'm like silently cheering the mom on. It's such an experience. And you've been there. So you, I mean, you, it, I'm sure that this kind of like brings up those kind of like memories for yourself. Um, it does. Let's talk about your journey a little bit because uh, you've been extremely supportive for me as I'm going through this because um, you, you've personally gone through IVF. Would you talk yeah. about, you know, how long did you start or how long did it take before you started or get, got to that point? Sorry, <laughs> not very eloquently stated, but you know what I'm saying. Take it away, Lauren. I do. <laughs> um, my husband and I tried, I would say, 
I, I heard your whole, like, when you start to try and like what that actually means and like the different stages of trying. Yeah. Um, so I would say altogether like two years and then we were like, this isn't happening. So we went to the doctor, did all the things we did IUI, you know, all that stuff. Um, and then, yeah, then we did the IVF and IVF gets really intense. Like you're on a bunch of different medications. You are giving yourself a bunch of different shots. You're a literal pin cushion. Mm. You're going to the doctor all the time. You're getting your blood drawn. Um, and then the day when they do the extraction of the eggs is bizarre, um, but super cool. And you're only down for a little while. It's amazing all the stuff that they can do and then just send you home. Like I, that always was just like, wow, you're, you're going in there and then you're sending me home. <laughs> um, so we ended up with a, we were really lucky. We had some really, they really do grade them by like letters. So we had some grade A eggs um, <laughs> and we had, I feel like it was with six and that's, that's a really good amount. We were six retrieved really or six grade A. Oh no, we had like a bunch retrieved, wow. but we had six that were A. Okay, wow, so, that's great. And did you freeze any yeah. of them? Yep. Awesome. Yeah, so we did a fresh cycle with just one. Okay. Because my doctor was very, I love my doctor. Um, a little shout out to um, Envia. <laughs> they, my doctor there was just fantastic, Dr. Clipstein. Like she was fantastic. Um, but she wanted to go very conservatively. So she's like, here, we're gonna start with just one. And I was like, that's not gonna, that's not gonna work. But she was like, well, we're gonna do this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm the doctor, you the listen one. to me. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. And I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> so she put the one in, did the whole thing where, you know, you're not supposed to do the pregnancy test, the two week wait, everything. And then, yeah, no, got the phone call, it didn't work. So that was devastating. Um, and then the next time she was like, let's just try one again. And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's do two let's do two and um so that was our frozen we had a frozen okay fresh cycle and then a frozen cycle okay which is nice because so, then you don't have to do the painful part of the egg retrieval again yes. no more egg retrieval it was wonderful <laughs> so much easier on the whole the whole thing was so much easier so she put in the two and i got my beautiful aiden um my firstborn my eight-year-old um, and then we still luckily had the three left over to try again because we knew we wanted two. So we had three solid um, eggs left over. Oh, so the other thing was that was really interesting, Lynn, and I don't know if they've talked to you about it yet, but is they do something called ICSI? Have they talked to you about yep. ICSI yet? Yeah, I had, to, I had to do a whole training program for that. Leading yeah, up to yeah. IVF, so yeah. Yep. Did you do ICSI? So we, uh, we did ICSI, yeah. Both times? Both times. Awesome. Oh, we, I mean, the only we only had to do it one time. Oh, yeah, obviously, because you get their grade yeah. after ICSI. Yes. yes. But please, um, actually, yeah. because I have not talked about IVF, um, so if anyone's watching, just briefly explain ICSI, because you'll probably say it right, and I probably won't. <laughs> so they, like, the way I understand it and remember it is they do, like, I'm imagining, like, little men, like the Doozers. You remember the Doozers from Fraggle Rock? Like, no. <laughs> I just aged myself <laughs> a little bit. I, I honestly, yeah, Fraggle Rock, I, I think there is just like a, a two-year age gap between us, and I think they were just like that much ahead of me. <laughs> well, so the little doozers come in and they like knock on the eggs just to open it up a little bit so that when they put the sperm in, instead of like waiting for the sperm to go into the egg by itself, they're like manipulating it for you. Right. So that the sperm goes where it needs to go. And I was like, please, like, I don't want to wait for nature on anything anymore. Like do what you need to do to get it where it needs to go. Get that damn <laughs> like, yes. sperm in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like let's do the ICSI, like do it up. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I, that's what. That's I what think we, the, we saw a video of it recently. Um, Bert and I watched the training video, <laughs> the IVF training video on this. It, yeah. And it's like, um, yeah, they, they show the egg and that they kind of, yeah, like poke a hole through it. And then like the sperm mm -hmm. swims through this kind of like, I don't know, like needle, teeny tiny, you know, microscopic. Teeny tiny little and thing. And it goes straight into the egg and then they pull the needle out and hope that the little sperm does its thing. So that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, he knows what to do. I've heard a lot about um, ICSI and... Um, and yeah, Kelly's also re recommending the same doctor. It's awesome. Um, yeah. 
Oh, or is that that's a different doctor, but same uh, facility? No, it's same doctor same and doctor. facility. That's awesome. Yeah, I've basically recommended her to our entire soccer team. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Um, yeah, the, and then, okay, so you, what did you do for your second then? I don't think I know this part. Oh, um, well, also in between there, just so you know, like, and I know we can talk about this at another time, but um, mm -hmm. I did acupuncture. So during my entire fertility journey, I went to my acupuncturist because I always like balancing Eastern and Western medicine. So I, my fabulous uh, acupuncturist, Sherlyn, over at TriBalance um, Acupuncture, um, she helped me through getting my body prepped and ready so that it was really like what we called sticky. Like, so it's ready to go. And like when eggs get in there, they're going to stick. And um, so she really prepped me, like we did some diet stuff and we did some burning things that smelled really bad. Um, <laughs> like, I mean, really bad. Um, I would do treatments right before and right after. So I did the retrieval, I had a treatment. And then when we did the, um, the implantation day, like I went to her immediately after and had a treatment done to increase stickiness. Um, and then she was with me throughout my entire pregnancy. Like I was, I had such an easy pregnancy and I do think that acupuncture had a lot to do with it. Um, is you did this then, for both, both of your sons? Mm -hmm. I did. Um, sure did. Okay, cool. This is good to know. Yeah. You, did you do that for IUI as well or just IVF? Yep. She was there with me when I was doing the IUI. Like when I went and made the appointment with Dr. Klipstein, I went and made an appointment with Sherlyn. Got it. So okay. like it was hand in hand from that moment on. Awesome. Um, yeah. And so w when we were ready to have Desmond, we were like, Sherlyn, let's start up these fertility acupuncture treatments again. And she was like, you know it. And we were ready to go again. I didn't have to do the retrieval. I didn't have to do all the shots that time around. It was literally, let's get your blood checking. Like, let's figure all that out. And then we'll schedule the implant I'm saying it wrong it's not implantation but you know what I mean like the day where you go and have the egg implanted in you yeah um I think that is implantation or no yeah you're right uh it's oh now now I've I'm drawing a blank too yeah, because I kept I'm saying totally... it I kept saying it for uh for the IUI procedure and it wasn't the right term for IUI I was like no that's for IVF but it'll come to us it'll come to us yes I'm sure it will <laughs> so, yeah and then um I, and then on both she also helped me when I was like, I need to get these babies out of me. I am ready. They are cooked. Let's go. So she gave me treatments. Um, she does a three day treatment where it's, um, she gets your body ready to have the baby. And wow. so it's a three day treatment on the third day of both of them is when I had my babies. Wow. And did, yeah, it's did, pretty you, crazy. Have a, did you have a pretty smooth birth both times? Yep. Very smooth. Ooh, both okay. of them were super smooth. I'm sold. Okay, wait, is this the person <laughs> that you actually recommended to me? Is this the same? Yes. Oh my God. Yes. Okay. Well, the only problem is it's in Schaumburg and I'm in Chicago. And I, I know. <laughs> I know. I was all like, right. can you just plan all your family dinners for when you go see Sherlyn? <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to do some definite planning here around this. Um, you, I'm just checking the comments here. You got a, a vote for the Fraggle Rock. Fraggle Rock goes hard. <laughs> Uh, and I missed a comment earlier from Brandy Hatter um, that the pictures in the birthing center are amazing. So she saw that. Do you know Brandy? I don't know Brandy. Yes, she's my intern. Oh, Hi, Brandy. Hi, Brandy. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Appreciate you uh, joining us today. Um, yeah. Wow, Lauren. And you know what? I feel like in a, the cool thing is, is you're on again next Friday with us to talk about a yeah. completely different subject. So we will tap back into this because now I have more questions. Okay. And so, so guys, tune in next week if you want to hear more about these about Lauren's journey, because um, I certainly do. Um, okay. So when you became a new mom, did you do your own photos? I didn't. So I wasn't even doing newborn photos yet when okay. my when I had newborns. So with Aiden, um, we just did the hospital ones, which is always an option. Um, it's Bella baby. It's they're in a ton of hospitals, um, and so they'll come in on day one or day two which is what I, we call in the photography world, fresh 48 session. Um, so they'll come in and they have like a couple baskets. It's quick, you're in and out, 
and it's kind of expensive. Um, so you can look out and have someone who's an actual photographer doing those photos, or you can have someone that just got hired by Bella Baby and was given the camera and said, here you go. Yeah. So it's definitely varied. And we got lucky and our Aiden pictures were great. Um, they were fine. Like, I wouldn't say they were great, but they're, they're, they're good. <laughs> we have a couple of them. Framed. They pass. They're, they're like C yeah, they classes. Pass. <laughs> they are. I mean, really. And that's when I was just like, I could do better. Um, mm. So that's when I started to really dig in. Newborn photography is a rabbit hole. Oh my God. So there's just so many different ways you can do it. So many different things you can buy. And like, you have to buy a bunch of stuff if you're going to dive into the rabbit hole that is newborn photography. Um, so by the time I had Desmond, I was definitely up and running, but I still didn't want to do my own photos. Um, I, one of my good friends and a former intern of mine um, as well, um, Melanie Kane, she is amazing. She's an amazing photographer. So she did Desmond's um, newborn photos. That's so great that you, because you have this community of photographers. I'm, I'm going to bring up mm -hmm. these, um, these brand, these baby pictures up again that we had been looking at before, um, but just because they're relevant right now and they're so good. This will be, yeah, view <laughs> number fifty one for me. <laughs> uh, um, let me bring up here. Yeah, I can skip ahead to this. Yes. And this is, you know, 48. yeah. And this is so much different than like our baby photos where it was us in just in the carrier and mm -hmm. everyone had, everyone looked the exact same back. I don't know. I don't know about you and me, but I think that everyone had the same photo back then. And this is just yeah. so much more precious. I love these. And that, yeah. Connection. So I do, I do what's called, um, lifestyle newborn photography sessions. So as you can see, um, it's kind of more like in the moment in people's homes, the whole family's there. Um, some of them are slightly posed, but I never pose too much, but I'm like, here, sit here and then just be a family, talk to one another, kiss the baby, be with the baby, be with each other. Like that's yeah. kind of my direction. And then I'll do a few like wrapped cute little wrap pictures of the baby in like a basket or a drawer or whatever. Um, some people do the more posed sessions where you're like going to a studio and you're going to spend like three to four hours in that studio. And that's not an over exaggeration. That's how long they are. Wow. Um, and they're in different poses and different wrappings. They're the naked baby pictures. So the babies that are like this, that you're like, how did you get a baby to do this? <laughs> um, <laughs> but they're two very distinct newborn styles and I am the lifestyle style. I love that. Um, yeah, and we have some comments here. Sparks liking that is more dynamic um, of photos. And Kelly's commenting she had her baby in November, and they actually didn't do um, uh, the photo service in the hospital. Yeah, right. so I, I'm sure that's probably coming back, but that's, yeah, that's been a really disappointing thing. On Wednesday's show, um, actually someone had commented when I told them you were coming on, they're like, we didn't even get to do newborn photos last year at all because of COVID. And so now they're trying yeah. to catch up, you know, just like, you know, in the first few months and everything. So let's talk about that a little. Okay. Sure. In the scenario, people do not have their photographer lined up and they need to, mm -hmm. uh, to do their own. What, uh, what can they do with their, just their iPhone? So, um, honestly, the camera doesn't matter as much as your lighting. Okay. So lighting is kind of everything. So the first thing you want to do is find, um, a place in your home near a window that has really good natural light. Natural so like right light. now I'm next to like my whole windows here. Like this would be an ideal room. It's very well lit. Um, you don't want to use flash with a baby. So put away the flash, don't do it. Um, so you want all the natural light. And if it's not a sunny day, then at least you want to get to a spot where there's light coming in from the window. Secondly, those iPhones are, um, if you put them in portrait mode, they're going to have the, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my they're going to have the, the depth, the depth of field is what gives you that like professional looking kind of thing. Right. Um, kind of the so blurred background and like the info, mm -hmm. kind of what I've got going on with my lens though. This isn't fake. This is a fancy lens I've got. Yeah. But yeah. iPhone does this for you, which is great. Right. 
So the thing is with that is that you want to make sure that you're really focusing on the baby's face when you do it. Because um, if you focus elsewhere, like the baby's then going to be blurred because so it's the focus is super narrow, which is why you're able to get so much light, which is why the background is blurred because you're trying to just focus on like a face. Yeah. Um, so you want to make sure that you're, you can tap on your iPhone right where you want it to focus and then take the picture. Um, so lighting, making sure you're focusing on the face and yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Kelly, yeah, Kelly said they use the the room with the most lights in their house, the three season yep. room. That's three walls of yep. of windows. <laughs> it was perfect. Yeah, everything's well lit. We didn't have to worry about anything. Um, I could get all photography on you and tell you why that matters so much, but um, I won't. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's your iPhone. And then the nice thing, your iPhone that you can remember is you don't always have to shoot it this way your iPhone can go this way. <laughs> and <laughs> well, you see all the people like with only straight up and down photos now, yep. and you're just like, dude, mm -hmm. turn it. Like get, some horizontal shots are nice. Get some of both. Yes, right. get some of everything. And then also the other thing I want to remind people is, is that hand that phone off to other people and you yes. get in the pictures. This is tip number two. Tip number two is you get in the pictures because you're going to look back and you're going to look through and you're going to be like, where the heck was I? And it's not even, it's not even just for you. It's like when your kids look back, I, I look back through my photos as a baby all the time. I don't know, because again, I'm obsessed <laughs> with photos. Um, but like you want your kids to be like, oh yeah, mom and dad were there. <laughs> and like, um, remember those times. So have right. someone else snap, snap your pictures with you, with your kids. And how young mom and dad look when you're first born, right? Compared to how they are now when you're, you know, yeah. old enough to, you know, know what they look like. Have your own. Exactly. Yeah. Well, also, um, mm. and moms, I feel like, fall into this specifically. Yes, they're great for slideshows. Um, moms tend to also do the most picture taking, right? Mm -hmm. Like, let's be honest, moms are out there taking pictures all the time. Yeah. And so dad's in a bunch of them, but you're not. So please make sure to ask other people, please take a picture of me with my kids. Right. Yeah. Partners, get in there, take those pictures. It's mm -hmm. a really, really wonderful thing that you can do, you know, for birthdays, Mother's Day and stuff like that. You know, like those are, those are keepsakes that are, oh, you know, priceless, right? Yeah. Okay, um, tip number three, Lauren. Do you remember what this one was? <laughs> Help. How do, Line. <laughs> uh, print those photos. Yes, print them. Oh my God, print, print, print. Brian's going to be like, oh my God, Lauren prints too many photos. We have too many frames in the house. But I don't care. Like, they're meant to be printed. So especially your your professional ones, don't just go and get a professional shoot done and then not ever print them or not ever look at them again. Like they're, 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 they're more useful than just putting it up on social media. Like, please yes. print them out, find nice frames, put them up in your home. Like they can be such a really wonderful piece of art on your walls. Um, yes. And even if it's just an iPhone photo, if you really love it, print it. Um, and the other thing is that I can suggest that I do every year and my kids look forward to it every year is I make a yearbook. Um, so we make a yearbook of our entire year, iPhone photos are in there, professional photos are in there. It doesn't matter. The kids go back and they look through those yearbooks all the time. And then come Christmas time, they're like, mom, are you doing our yearbook yet? And I'm Aww. always like, leave me alone. <laughs> I'm getting it done, but let's get through Christmas. <laughs> it takes a lot of work. Yeah. I've put together a few photo books. I'm like, this is a lot of time, but I don't know. Do you have any tips? Do you, do you do it as you go? Or do you wish you did it as you go? No, I like doing it at the end of the year. It's like a nice, like little year retrospective. Nice. Um, and I just, I, I have Google, um, Google photos. So they'll organize it for you by month, by day. Mm -hmm. And then you can just go back through and be like, boom, put it in an album for me, please. Um, so Google photos is wonderful. And also like you can set up your phone, your iPhone that it'll directly just save up to Google photos. And then you don't even need to 
keep them on your phone because that's what takes up so much space on people's phones, right? Or it's photos that they yeah. think they have to keep. You don't. Make it back up to Google Photos and then you can delete it. That's awesome. Then it's so easy. Then you can just mm -hmm. send it off, turn it into an album. Um, you have yep. some uh, recommendations for prints and photo albums and cards. You want to touch on those? Yes. So if you're using me, <laughs> you get a gallery and you can um, order prints right from the gallery. And the gallery that um, is connected to my website is MPIX. So it's M-P-I-X. Mm -hmm. They are the best. I, um, I only print photos from them. So a lot of people like to go to Walgreens. Fine. The quality's gone good. down there. It's bad. It's, it's really not bad. good. It's I don't good. recommend it anymore. A it's lot cheap. of people go to. Sh <laughs> it is cheap. Yeah. But um, a lot of people also go to Shutterfly. I hate, I hate Shutterfly. Oh no! <laughs> That's actually Kelly asked about that one specifically. I use Shutterfly. Well, only... It's not so bad, but it's they trick you. It's all tricks. Mm -hmm. It's all marketing tricks. Well, the other thing that they do for professional photographers is they darken all our photos. So then it, they don't look good. They don't look good anymore and it drives me batty. Um, so I use collage.com to okay. make my books. So like the book, this book that I made mm -hmm. it, um, is collage.com. And then all my yearbooks, collage.com. They're nice. so easy. Um, you just kind of click and drag the photos that you want in on a certain page and then they'll arrange it in all the ways that make sense and look cool. And they've got like the lay flat pages and all that stuff. So if you don't use my website, I definitely say do collage.com. Awesome. Show people what the yeah. lay flat pages are and how nice this is. Cause you don't lose any of the photo in the crease of the book. Yeah. So <laughs> yes, there's, yeah, and there's literally, it's, it is literally laying flat yeah. and then, yeah, like there's no, um, yeah. you don't lose anything here. Right. And that's what a lot of the like wedding albums are, uh, as well. Mm -hmm. It's okay, Kelly. Now, you know, um, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, okay, Kelly. <laughs> that's why you watch, right? To learn. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the other helpful tip, hint that I want, especially for moms, is don't always care what you look like. Your kids don't care. Take the pictures. Be in the moment. Be in I the moment. That. Sorry. Yeah. That's a great. That's a really great tip. Capture those real genuine moments. It doesn't have to be staged. Those fake smiles, everyone can see through those, right? You don't have to smile. Yeah. Like, no. how often are you actually smiling when you have kids? What percentage of time, Lauren, would, would you say? <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest here. Don't worry. I won't tell the kids you said this. <laughs> So let's say on a good day, <laughs> maybe you get like 75%, which is a really good day. On a bad day, especially during COVID, 20. <laughs> it's actually higher than I thought. So that's really good. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I do love have good that. boys. So as an artist, uh, what, what is your, what's your next project or what would you love the opportunity to shoot? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm always, always trying to figure out what my next um, thing is going to be. So I did a whole thing on tattoo mamas and tattoo daddies, which I adore. I kind of want to like bring that back and do that again. So that's one thing. Um, the other thing is, is that I'm really into locations. Like the problem with being a photographer is, is that you can't go anywhere without being like, well, that would photograph well, well, that would be an awesome location. <laughs> well, that's really got good light. Um, it's just, as constant. So, um, there's these, and I really can't remember anymore where it is, but it's in the city and it's all of these graffiti walls. Mm. And all I want to do is do family sessions this summer by all these graffiti walls. And so, um, or family sessions, breastfeeding sessions, which I still would love to like promote again, because I feel like I haven't done enough breastfeeding sessions in a while. Um, I don't care what kind of session it is. I just want it done by the graffiti wall. <laughs> so that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, I just really want to go explore more locations and yeah. do more really cool art photos with everyday people. I love that. Um, Spark is asking if you do uh, sports photography. 
I don't. Um, that is a whole thing in and of itself. Like you need special equipment for it, special lenses for it. Yeah. Um, it is when, when people can do it well, it's really great, but it's really, really hard. Really tough. That's you need a super fast shutter speed and a really, really good lens. Those lenses themselves yeah. are like thousands of dollars. Yeah. And they're like this big. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> They're huge. Yeah. And if you, yeah, if you get a golden shot, that is like, all right, I'm done here. All right. Like I'm, money. Uh, Did yeah. my thing. <laughs> Finally paid for my lens. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, yeah. I don't, you know, like you know, you've done headshots before too. So that's the thing is you, you, your, your portfolio is actually, you know, just definitely not limited to maternity and birth photos and, mm -hmm. and, and these ones that we've mentioned. Um, what other ones have we missed? Uh, I've seen graduation photos a lot. You do yep, a lot do of senior wonder, wonderful family portraits. Um, yes, yeah, that's, I mean, family thing, family is my thing. Um, besides the birth stuff, family is my thing. So, and honestly, they go together. I don't see them as being separate because I love getting to know people when the baby's in their belly and then photographing them throughout. Like I have a client, um, just like I did Kelly's. So like I did it, their engagement, wedding, maternity, babies, and family. Like I just, I love the, the, the chain of being able to see it be with a family. That's the social work side in me. Like I like getting to know them at that age and then watching their family grow and being part of them. Yeah. And you do oh. you do a great job of capturing people's personalities. It seems like at least because I know Paul and Kelly, I it I don't know. Every photo you take of them, I'm like, "Yep, that's Paul and Kelly." Like there's no it's not <laughs> fake, you know. Yeah. It's not staged. No. No, not staged. Um the other thing that I love doing too is I call it a day in the life. So mm. it's for it's for families that are like you know what, my kids are never going to sit still for an hour long session. And again, this, this was bumped by COVID, but as soon as we can, as soon as people are comfortable again, um, I like going into your home, being a fly on the wall and taking pictures of you in your day to day with your kids. Um, those are my, some of my favorite and like, they're not posed at all. Like I don't put you in positions at all. Like you're supposed to pretend like I'm not there. If we go to target, while I'm there, we go to Target and I will go and take <laughs> professional pictures with you while you're in Target. It's, I just want you in those really, really special moments with your kids and the special moments come from the day-to-day -day stuff. So that's, that's awesome. That's gotta be a little trickier with the lighting and everything though too, but I best, but that's kind of like the fun challenge for you is like figuring out how to capture it and make it look good at the same time, which is awesome. Yeah, I had a, I had a session at someone's house where we were in the basement because that's where the playroom was no lighting. So I have a flash, like it's no big deal. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, we just played on the floor for like an hour and then they made lunch and I took pictures of them making lunch and then it was nap time and I took pictures of them putting their wow. kids to bed and then I went home and it was really great. <laughs> I love that. Um, we'll take, um, an opportunity here. If, do you have any, um, comments in, on, uh, we're streaming also to Lauren's page. So we're streaming in three places today, guys. This is pretty, pretty advanced. No big deal. Uh, <laughs> but uh, do you have any comments from your page at all, Lauren, that you wanted to check I, in on? Do, oh yeah. My bestie Kelly said that, um, I did a day in the life for her and her two kiddos and they made pancakes and then they just played in their rooms and, she said that those are the favorite pictures that um, I've taken of her Aww. family. So um, Liz, hi, Liz. <laughs> she wants breastfeeding photos by a graffiti wall. <laughs> there you so, go. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, my sister was on there at some point, but I've lost like the, the comments have scrolled to a point where I can't see them. Oh, well, that's awesome that you've been having so many people watching on your channel. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Very cool, guys. And if you are watching on Lauren's channel, I would love for you to, you know, to follow. We'll, we'll be um, streaming again next week. It will not be about photography, so I'm not sure if she's going to go live on her photography page. But uh, you can look me up on YouTube uh, just under Lynn Clementi. Um, actually, mm, I was trying to think if actually in the description that you posted, Lauren, you didn't have a link to mine, right? I don't think so. I don't so. think so. Okay. Uh, and then, um, I'm also on Facebook as, um, baby talk with Lynn. So you can find me there and on Instagram as well, baby t at baby talk with Lynn. So if you're watching, I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel and support what we're doing. We have 
awesome people just like Lauren on as guests and I'm sharing my fertility journey. And if you've been on one or if you're going through your own, uh, you're not alone. This is exactly why we're, we're creating this whole channel. So thank you um, for everyone that's tuning in through Lauren. It's awesome that you guys are here today. Thank you. Welcome and nice to meet you. Um, all right, uh, Lauren, let's talk about you and your products. I'm going to bring up because since I plugged me, it's time for you to plug you. Uh, so you guys, uh, go ahead. You want to talk about um, like maybe what packages or pricing or anything like that? Do you want to touch on any of that or how to book? Sure. sure. Um, each of these, uh, through my Facebook page, you can send me a personal message and book that way. You can see all my different albums. Um, there will be different photos on Facebook than on my websites, just because I like to give you variety and you can see a bunch of different examples of my work. Um, so the Honey Round Photography is my original website and you can get everything you need there. It also includes my weddings, my senior photos, um, all different things. My Chicago birth photo is very specific to the bump to birth stuff. It only focuses on that. Um, so I do actually, my most popular package is the maternity newborn package. Um, so you get that all together, you get a mini maternity session and then you get the full lifestyle in home newborn session. Um, and that's definitely my most popular. Some people then turn it into a milestone session where I'm taking pictures of them throughout because the babies grow so fast. So we do a three month, a six month, a nine month. And at the end you get a cake smash and my sister makes my cakes and it's so much fun. Yeah. I didn't know your sister makes cakes. That's awesome. Yes, she does. She makes all my smash cakes and everybody loves them. Like they're so cute and they're so vibrant with the frosting, which is what you want because it gets all over the baby's face and the foot and the hands. And um, so yeah, the milestones are really fun. Yeah, I did. Uh, I think I got one good photo in like the 50 that I took uh, the other day of Nolan's um, second birthday. I was photographing his his cake stuff. Yeah. It's not easy and you want someone else doing that for you so that you can focus yes, on having me. fun at your kid's mm -hmm. birthday, right? Yeah. Get the yes. pro guys, get the pro. But yes. at least now you have some tips to help you with your um, your in-between moments. Um, did anybody, okay, if, if anyone else that's watching out there, if you have any questions for Lauren, go ahead, pop it into the uh, yeah. to the chat. Uh, she'd be happy to answer any of those. Um, this, this has been an awesome episode, I think, Lauren. I, I got a lot out of it, and we'd already covered all this the other day when we when we spoke. <laughs> I love the story that you told. I mean, it's heartbreaking, but it's also a good story. Um, oh, my mom says you. I'm going to say a shout out to my mom. My mom is here. Uh, hi. I haven't seen her in years. <laughs> Oh Hello. my God, that's awesome. I know. My mom watches every episode. It's so sweet. I love it. She's so and my cute. dad, too. Yeah. Uh, I love supportive parents. That's why we're going to be good. Well, I'm going to be a good parent. That's why you are a good parent, I think. Thank You're you. awesome, Lauren. Um, okay, let's uh, let's give a little teaser for next week. Do you want to? Okay. Yeah, okay, so, let's do it. Yes. Uh, so Lauren's also, as she mentioned earlier, a social worker. And um, we she had already been, before I started this whole Baby Talk channel, um, you never actually did them yet, right? The groups? So yeah, I tried, to, so like I said, okay, my own journey is what kind of spurred on a lot of my stuff, both in my photography world and social work world. So I was like, people need to talk about the fertility journey and not be ashamed of it and get help for it. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to, I started, I worked at the private practice at that time and I was like, listen, let's, let's start a support group for people going through the fertility journey. Yeah. Um, so I really got that out there. And then I also was like, uh, people need a lot of help postpartum too. So um, I ran a postpartum group at the private practice as well, um, which went really well. I was really happy with that. Um, so yeah, that's where those came from. That, that's awesome. So what Lauren and I have talked about doing now that um, I've got this channel and I can help her get the word out about this, you know, awesome idea that she has um for these groups and these groups have existed for other people but she's she's an amazing person and you know wants to put another group out there because they're limited in size there's only 10 people in them you you do them for you know six weeks at a time um and it's not just like you know you just show up and you know you chat and whatever it's structured it's with a professional and it's um you you get something out of it and i know that facebook groups can be supportive and i i get a lot of my support there it's i am not downplaying them at all they're super mm -hmm. awesome um but for more you know 
I, I can't wait. I'm honestly, when, when these groups start up, I'm in. Like, I'm 100% in because yeah. I've had those moments and there are so many emotions. And I've had a lot of people reach out to me about postpartum as well. And I think that there's definitely a need for these groups. So what we're going to talk about next week is more about these groups, um, what what they look like, and Lauren's background in them and everything. So that is going to be an awesome episode as well. Um, tune into that if you're on your journey or know someone else that's on theirs or if you're pregnant and, you know, you don't know what postpartum is going to look like for you. Is there any way to predict that at all, Lauren? And you think? I mean, so if you are already predispositioned towards having anxiety or depression, you're going to want to make a plan hmm. because it's it's going to come out in postpartum. Okay. It just will. Okay. It's a stressful time without those things. So, um, like, I have anxiety. So I knew I needed to make a plan for my postpartum journey because it, I knew I was going to be triggered in all sorts of ways. Ah, that's the perfect teaser for next week. Love yeah. it. <laughs> that's actually a, a journey that we have not sh- talked about yet on the show. So that's going to be awesome if you're willing to open up about that. Of course. Yeah. Awesome. All right, cool. I do not see any other questions popping into our chat. Um, we had an nope. awesome audience today, and I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of replays. So again, guys, if you are watching um, after this was recorded, please say hi in the comments. We'd love to know that you checked it out. And if you're new, don't be shy. I would love to meet you, and um, hopefully I can see you. I live stream Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 1 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, these lives are usually anywhere from, I don't know, 20 minutes to an hour. And uh, yeah, it's... It's so that nobody feels alone during their fertility journey. I am here with you. So we are going to bring up the music, dance it out. Lauren, is there anything else you want to, to drop on us? No? Nope. No, just thank you so much for having me. And I'm so proud of you for doing this. And I can't wait to see you in person. <laughs> oh, my God. I know soccer is starting soon. I can't wait. <laughs> All right, guys. We're bringing up the music. And ooh, actually, which playlist am I play- putting on here? I think this one. Yeah. Here we go. Groovy. <laughs> I'll put up some more of those pictures that we had at the beginning as well. Ooh, or that we played before. Thank you guys for watching today, and we will see you Monday. Monday at 1. Yeah. Thanks, Lynn.